right? So, Coach, is it, this is kind of the deceiving offense. I mean, they're two and five, but when you see on film, I mean, very balanced. They can still put points and yards on the board. Uh, what do you see from that? You know, I, I think they do a lot of stuff formationally, and then they have explosive players, you know, at wide receiver and, and you know, two or three home run hitters in there at running back. and. You got to do a great job. They're, they are very balanced. About 240 a game rushing, 240 a game passing. So, um, you know, you it, it's you sound like a broken record every week saying the same things, but it really does boil down to you got to stop the run. You got to make them, you know, try to throw the football. And uh, you know, and then when you do, you just got to eliminate the explosive plays. I think with these guys. Quarterback Justin Herbert only has two games under his belt, but it seems like he got their offense going. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he does a nice job spreading the ball around, and he's a threat to run. Got great size. Uh, and then uh, I think maybe just kept him a little bit more off balance, you know. Uh, I think his accuracy might be a little bit better. Uh, it's hard to judge in two games, but I think he's he, he made some nice throws. Uh, it, to lead him, you know, they got down 24 to nothing against Cal, and I thought he did a nice job. Uh, what was it, six touchdown passes. So. Uh, if you allow those guys to maintain that balance, it uh, could be in for a long day. When you have a young quarterback like that, I know you want to get pressure on him, but when you have a quarterback that can also scoot, how do you attack that? You well, him? you know, I, I think he's a different kind of guy, that, that runner. You know, he's very uh, – when he gets outside containment, now he's still a, run, uh, a threat to run the ball, but he's a threat also to throw it. So you got to do a great job containing him. And then, you know, with all their – their read zone, read power, read stretch. You got to do a nice job making sure that you have accountability on him because he kind of lulls you to sleep. He'll give it, give it, give it, give it, and then runs the ball. So he's very, uh, you know, intelligent kid and makes good reads and good decisions. So uh, doesn't seem to put the ball in jeopardy a lot. Uh, so again, at some some point, you got to get him off balance. You got to get him off kilter. So. Uh, I think very similar to what we did, you know. I mean, can't say enough about our kids from a week ago. I mean, 11 tackles for loss, seven quarterback sacks. You know, they they had no chance of running the football because uh, I think we dominated the line of scrimmage, um, and it has to be more of the same this week. I know a lot of the defense for you guys uh, philosophically was built when Gus was with you. Is this offense similar to what Gus does at all? Uh, I would say. Uh, I assume you're talking about Oregon's offense. I would, I would say, no. I mean, in, there are certain things that that are, but then there are certain things that aren't. I mean, Gus, Gus, uh, the complexity came within the simplicity of Gus's offense. You know, Gus gives the illusion that he does all this stuff, but really, uh, he really just runs the football, and he has a simple passing game. That part of it is very similar. Uh, Formationally, he's not as multiple as maybe what Oregon is. They're they're a little bit more multiple formation-wise, with certain structures and and personnel groupings. Uh, but yes, there there are similarities, but there are uh, some distinctive differences as well. You touched on the run game. Can you kind of like, take me through like what Royce Freeman is like this year compared to last year? For you, guys? you know, it looks to me like he's been a little bit banged up, but I assume he'll be healthy against us. Uh, <laughs> just the way the season's going. I mean. Uh, I think that uh, we fully expect him to be the guy. He's the guy. I mean, he, he's an NFL running back. And, and then the other two guys are, uh, you know, 170 pounds and, you know, fast as grease lightning. I mean, you can't allow those guys to get the ball to the perimeter and then turns into a foot race with those guys. So you got to keep them, you know, inside and in front. And then you can't allow – and where – he is a, he's more deceptive. Once he gets the ball to perimeter, you see him break the ball just like he did against us last year. No one ever catches him. So when he's healthy, he and and and, and you better bring your lunch pal when you're going to tackle him because you, you're not going to come knock him down. You got to you got to create population and get multiple people and gain tackling. Gronk Cup is the JC transfer really came with all the expectations, but do you expect him to lead the Pac-12 right now with eight sacks? I would say he might. Well probably our best defensive player right now from what we asked him to do. What was most impressive about what he did the other night, played 68 defensive snaps, covered every punt, covered every kick, uh, and had all those sacks. And he's like that. I mean, I've never seen a guy that can play at such a – there's no telling what he runs a 40-yard dash in. I have no idea. Uh, but 
he just gets better and gains confidence every single day. The, what has surprised me, not so much about what he can do physically, what surprised me more than anything is the amount uh, of things that we're asking him to do. If you had ever told me he'd be the gunner on our uh, punt team, uh, covering kicks, you know, I looked at it today and tried to streamline some things for him. He lines up, he has about four different deployments from a structure defensive uh, that we ask him. And I'm just sitting there like going, and what's so great about that kid is uh, I show up Sunday, and I had a recruit here on campus and I show up Sunday morning and he's the first guy you run into on the elevator. Uh, he's down there, you know, in study hall and so that he can get ahead so that he can get back up there later on that day to study the game film, study opponent film. And, uh, and then he's hanging out in Coach Slocum's office, my office. I mean, uh, he has been a pleasant surprise in that regard, uh, just his work ethic. And uh, uh, man, the sky's the limit for that guy. Three stars in a row now for Marcus at safety, and he's led you guys tackles all three weeks. I would say if we had to have two MVPs, you know, I, I really believe uh, Mo Akiola has had his two best games as well. He's played two really solid football games. Marcus Ball has put together three games in a row that probably as good as, you know, any any DB that we've had maybe since I've been here other than maybe Damaris. Uh, I mean, he's playing unbelievably he's physical in his tackling. He's, he's making great plays in pass coverage. He's doing an unbelievable job uh, supporting the run. Uh, and he's as big a part of that is why I think we're so tough to run the ball against is when he's playing like that, man, he, he's, he's uh, really been uh, – it's good to see when you see a young man that has fought through some of the adversity that he's had to fight through to, to be able to perform at the level that he's performing at. It's, it, that's great. To, to lose Salamo again, you, know, you, had a, you didn't have him, you get him, he's finally getting back in shape, now you lose him again apparently for a while. But, um, what, what do you do there, and can Jason Lewis help you right away? You know what? I, I don't know if he can help us right away, but i tell you what, for the future, um, I know at one point, uh, I think I was telling those guys earlier, I had multiple all-conference performers at linebacker, and they all had one characteristic in common, and it was the fact that they were high school running backs. So I think that um, I think he fits that mold. He's got a great body. I mean, a 250-pound athletic guy that can run. Uh, and I think he's excited to play the position, you know. Uh, but he exemplifies he's got toughness, size, athleticism. It's just I think it's going to be a process, you know, learning what we're doing. But just from what I've seen uh, over over the course of this week, he, he has a tremendous upside. So uh, he won't be as, you know, part of the game plan per se at linebacker this week. But we've done some things that – I, re I like what I've seen the last two days at what we did at linebacker. Uh, not going to tell you what it is, but uh, <laughs> I, I like what I've seen so far. So, you know, we'll see what happens on Saturday.